And we join you once again live from Fairmont State. It is Griffin's game day and the head coach Isaac Collins show here on the Westmoreland Sports Network getting you ready for Seton Hill and Fairmont State week number one of the college football season. And Coach, uh, welcome to Seton Hill. I know I don't need to welcome you anymore. You've been here for quite a while now, probably longer than what it seems. But um, from everybody, uh, the, the parents, the alumni, the faculty, our first chance to talk prior to a game. Again, everybody uh, very excited to have you here at Seton Hill. Well, very excited to be here. And it's uh, been a, a tremendous off season, And just uh, the support that uh, we've received, our staff, and uh, the folks that are behind us uh, back up at Seton Hill, is just it's, it's been amazing. So we're excited to get this thing kicked off. Last time we spoke, uh, you were going in uh, a million different directions. Uh, you were hired in December. We had our show with you, and uh, we talked about a number of different things. But, um, again, you were trying to get acclimated to everything. You were trying to get acclimated to Greensburg, your personal life with your family, and you had to recruit, too. So I'm sure it feels very good to just focus on Fairmont State here tonight. Well, certainly the seasons change, and, uh, you know, now that we're in the fall, you kind of shift and focus on the young men that are on campus and kind of putting together a football team that can be successful this fall. Uh, so that's definitely exciting. It's just one less thing on the plate right now. Uh, we can kind of focus on trying to find a way to beat Fairmont State. You decided to take this position after three very successful years at Widener, turning around that football program. Uh, what got you so excited about this job here at Seton Hill? Well, there's no doubt. I mean, I talk to uh, folks all the time because I get asked that question. Uh, really, it, it, when I got here, it was the people. I mean, I was really, really sold on the people that I met in the interview process uh, and, and just the dynamics of what took place in the interview process. I thought they were very thorough. I thought the questions that uh, not only the administration, uh, but uh, some of the faculty members and, and even staff, they, they asked me some tough questions that, you know, got me excited because it meant they cared, that they weren't just, you know, uh, kind of going through the motions and wanted to hire a football coach just to have one. You know, they had a big picture and a, and, and, a, and a game plan of what they envisioned Seton Hill football looking like, uh, and certainly that was, uh, you know, kind of joined it up with our philosophies and what we try to do with our program. So, no doubt, when I walked away, I knew it was going to be a long ride back to uh, Philadelphia, and it was. In fact, I didn't call my wife for the first hour of the trip just uh, trying to, you know, make up my mind and wrap my head around, you know, if they would offer me the job, what, 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 what would I do? So, uh, certainly uh, the people uh, and I think the vision and just where I think Seton Hill can go. Uh, were all things that kind of pointed me uh, that this was the right move in the right time. And I know a lot of people here are very excited to have you. Um, we've spoken a few times this offseason about how uh, good of a job you did turning around the Widener football program and how you would be able to uh, turn around the Seton Hill football program and kind of what you guys are doing to do that. Um, again, just talk about the coaching staff and, and your philosophy on turning around a football program in general and here at Seton Hill and just how the returners from last year, the returning um, – you know, upperclassmen from last year's team that have returned this year, how they've bought into that? Well, I think any time you're part of a team, it comes down to trust, you know, and I think we've uh, established very early uh, with the young men that were already on campus, uh, with the young men that we recruited, uh, and even when I was selecting the staff, it was important to me that I found guys that were going to be excited about being at Seton Hill, and I think that's your number one mission when you're trying to build a program. When I got to Widener, it was about finding, you know, coaches and players uh, that wanted to be a part of the Widener experience and, and as I kind of recruited the coaches to come on board I, I sold them on a lot of the things that I felt in the interview and kind of sold them on the idea of what we could build here and being a part of making some history and and more importantly giving this university and our student athletes something that they deserve which you know would be to win a championship uh, and, and have success on the field so all those things kind of coupled into us building it the right way uh, we went out and recruited some good high school kids uh, you know kind of cut back a little bit on taking transfers and not that that's wrong but for us we wanted to stabilize the program and, and be able to develop some kids so we, we know we got a young roster we know we got a bunch of new faces uh, but all these things are kind of you know uh, the, the steps that you have to take if you're going to turn a program around that that's been a little bit down on its luck like Seton Hill has been the last few years try to lay that foundation yes. as opposed to bringing in some stop gaps is kind of what you mean as far as uh, you know uh, transfers go well there's no doubt I mean I don't think there's a quick fix in college football you know I think chemistry is very important to me uh, so when when we got here, uh, we didn't want to rush to to make the wrong decisions, you know. So, you know, we were fortunate enough to find a couple of what I consider the right types of transfers, guys that have multiple years, uh, guys that were either uh, embedded in the area uh, that that understood, hey, I'm from Pittsburgh or I'm from you know Pennsylvania. Those things were kind of important to us in the evaluation process in terms of trying to find guys that you know would be able to come here and, and really kind of you know be able to put their roots down uh, and and look at it as a, a true uh, second chance 
and, and, and a fresh start. So those were things that led us in recruiting in terms of just our thought process there. I know, Coach, you'll probably say the biggest challenge in the offseason for the players has been grasping the system the way you like to do things, the way the staff likes to do things specifically. Um, but even more specific than that, what has been um, you know, some challenges involved um, you know, with this team, with the players in this past offseason and, and through camp um, specifically with, with grasping things? I think, I think the biggest thing is just when you put demands on them. You know, college football is very demanding. You know, I think the expectations of being a student athlete uh, and, and, and looking at it from the perspective that what's important to us is that we want to be able to see you, you know, grow and develop in your time here at Seton Hill, not just as a football player, but as a man, as a student. Uh, we want to make sure at the end of your four years, we've prepared you to be successful, you know, beyond your time here. And I think that's hard. People don't understand it. To do the right thing is extremely hard. We talked about it all camp that, you know, uh, the, the little things in life that allow us to be successful are easy to do. Yeah, but they're also easy not to do, you know, and that's one of the things that we kind of talked with our guys a lot about it. Hey, it's easy to get up in the morning and go to class and sit in the front row. Hey, but it's also easy to sleep in, especially when there's a little snow on the ground. So from our standpoint, just getting them to understand the details and doing the little things consistently, you know, that's been the biggest challenge. Because I think we've had guys that want to do it and they do it sometime, but getting them to do it every single day and making that, you know, kind of, as they say, you know, developing good habits, you know. So these are things that I think were important to us. And, and those are the things that our guys are still struggling with. You know, we, we have our ups and downs in practice, you know, where guys are still trying to figure it out. So those are bigger challenges than, than anything you face in terms of your depth chart and talent and those types of things. Just getting a football team to understand that every single day we get up, you know, we got to be working towards something. You know, and I think that's been our biggest challenge here is just getting the guys to, to, to gain that appreciation. When you're, let's face it, when you're 17, 18 years old, man, you, you got your whole life in front of you and everything can happen tomorrow. Absolutely. We're trying to teach them about the now. You know, let's get it done now. We are on the Griffins Game Day pregame show, the Coach Isaac Collins show here on the Westmoreland Sports Network. An interview with Tyler Zimmer still to come, and of course, kickoff coming up in just a little while. Um, let's talk about what we want to talk about, and that's this year's team. Um, two guys uh, are, are kind of leading the way for you on each side of the ball. We have to start with Tyler Zimmer, who we're again going to be hearing from in just a couple of moments. Um, Dectronics All-American linebacker from last season, um, voted as a captain as just a junior. Uh, tremendous year last year, tremendous leader. And and also Andrew Jackson on the offensive side of the ball. We talked about his big arm and his uh, big cap uh, capability and, you know, the, the way that he can kind of fend off a rush, a pass rush, and get loose and be able to throw on the run. Just kind of talk about those two guys and how they're leading the way for you. Well, there's no doubt, uh, you know, Zimmer's uh, become kind of the quarterback of our defense. Uh, we moved him from outside to inside, which I think uh, was really nice for him because it, just talking to him when I got here, you know, there were some games I think he got a little frustrated because he's on the right side of the field and they ran it to the left, or he's to the field, they ran it to the boundary. So teams were able to kind of get away from him. So we transitioned him uh, this spring uh, to play. Our, our Mike linebacker, uh, which is a, a critical, critical position. And I think you talk to any defensive coordinator, you know, your defense starts right down the middle with your nose tackle, your mic, and having a really good safety. And certainly having Zimmer with the experience he has, uh, with his ability, and then just the type of person he is uh, has been truly a blessing for us. And he's done a phenomenal job. He's had a really good camp. And I'm excited to see what he does this year, you know, and how he's able to, to raise the bar. Because when you're an All American, you know, and you come back the next year and you got two more years to play, you know, how do you top that you know so we really kind of talked to him about just focusing on you know doing the things that we need you to do in the system don't worry about the statistics because those things will take care of themselves but be a leader play hard play fast uh, your opportunities will come and, and people will recognize that as our team gets better so those are some things we kind of talked to him about uh, and then with Drew it's, it's been great I mean uh, I think he's been a little bit of a journeyman uh, so you know you know, finally settling in at Seton Hill and having an opportunity to be the starting quarterback. Uh, he really kind of took on a, a different personality this summer. You know, I talked to you a little bit about that earlier, just in terms of, you know, he was this quiet guy, you know, really kind of throughout our winter conditioning. And then all of a sudden we got the spring ball and he's getting after receivers, you know, in the summer, he's organizing uh, opportunities for them to throw and do seven on seven. And, you know, it was really, really neat just to kind of see him evolve as, as a guy that uh, not only was a captain, but just a leader of our offense because our offense goes as our quarterback goes. You know, so, uh, so certainly having him and having Tyler on the other side have been you know, two, two great additions for us and, and, and a great way for us to start our tenure here. 
and those are just two key pieces of some guys that you need to perform well. Who else had some good camps for you, Coach? Well, you know, Mike Akers, uh, another one of our captains. Uh, he plays nose guard for us. Uh, you know, uh, I, I've been so excited and impressed with him because I still remember the winter workouts where he was just struggling, you know. And when you get those 300-pounders and you're trying to condition them, it is tough, you know. <laughs> and he's been a guy. He worked extremely hard this summer. Uh, he was in the area. He's from Pittsburgh, but he came back here and he trained. Uh, so he did all the things necessary to get himself in, in in shape and I still remember uh, having a conversation with him in the winter that he didn't think he'd be able to pass our running test based on the times that we set well I'll tell everyone he passed it this summer uh, when we got to training camp so that wasn't an issue for him so I'm really excited to kind of see him uh, you know uh, grow and develop as this season goes on certainly uh, you're always sad when you have such you know, a great person that's going to be a senior you know because this is gonna, we're only going to get one crack at coaching him uh, so definitely excited about that uh, you know on the other side you know when, when I look at uh, you know our offense line. I talked a little bit about Zach Bufkin. Uh, you know, I think he's going to have an opportunity to hopefully have a breakout years. Uh, he, he had a really, really good camp. Uh, uh, we had uh, some receivers. Lance Williams, uh, you know, did a really, really good job. Eric Kearns is coming along. Uh, you know, he was redshirted last year, so this will be his first opportunity to, to kind of play under the lights, so to speak. So we're excited about him. Phil Moreland, you keep hearing me talk about him. Uh, Christian Carter uh, played a lot for him last year, uh, playing safety for us on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, excited about him, tremendous leader, uh, you know, uh, an outstanding student athlete, another one of those guys on our team that's well over a 3.0. So uh, I'm excited to see these guys have an opportunity to go out for the first time and play against someone else. You know, in, in practice, it's great. You know, <laughs> there's no pressure. You know, you get beat, you kind of line up. It's not a big deal. You you stay undefeated. Uh, but now, you know, that we're here, it's game day. Uh, it's an opportunity for uh, for those guys when the lights go on. It now counts. It's for real. And let's see how they match up with uh, a very good. Fairmont State team. What you like to say when the bullets start flying, we'll <laughs> we'll see we'll see who, where the men are. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you guys are a little bit banged up going into your opener, expecting to uh, get these guys back soon. And I want to ask you too about Sean Kelly, yeah. who's going to be lost for the season, unfortunately. Yeah, you know, Sean, it's uh, you know a heartbreak because he's another one of those tremendous kids that uh, they're in the program. Uh, showed great leadership, uh, worked his tail off this summer, worked his tail off this winter, and it was just a, a fluke thing. He was catching a ball out in the flat and just kind of turned the wrong way uh, you know so his his surgery went well uh, you know we're excited and looking forward to him healing and, and getting back but unfortunately he's going to have to sit this season out and uh, expecting to get some other guys, uh, you know, back soon as far, yeah, as, far as that goes. Yeah, coach. I mean, yeah, we, we've One been. One of those things. Yeah, right? we've been really fortunate. I mean, it's camp. I mean, you, you get your bumps and bruises, and, and, and knock on wood, we have not had, you know, outside of Sean Kelly, anyone that's had a major injury. Uh, so we're just, we're playing it smart. Uh, you know, obviously, you open up with a, with a non league game. Uh, your, your focus is for us, if we're going to win a championship and have a chance to get to the national playoffs, you know, we got to win the PSAC West and, and get into the PSAC championship game. So so in order to do that, we got to beat the folks behind Fairmont State, and that's not to, you know, kind of, you know, uh, you know put the, any less emphasis on the Fairmont State game. But we're really, in our mind, this is going to be a great test for us. Uh, it's a, it's a preseason game of sorts that, you know, we, we got some things that you can have some room for error. You know, we got to focus on when we get into league play, making sure we're healthy uh, and we're ready to make a run the next 10 weeks. And I do want to talk to you about the move into the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference, but why don't we do that next week when okay. you open up against uh, East Stroudsburg? Because we still have a couple more things to get to here in the first week. Um, Fairmont State, your opponent here tonight, a very similar situation uh, they're in as uh, Seton Hill was in. Jason Woodman, a new head coach there. Of course, uh, you're here at Seton Hill in your first year. He worked under um, uh, Jimbo Fisher. So um, I guess you get a little bit of a feel of what they like to do, uh, you know, offensively anyway with the uh, with the Pitt Florida State game the other night. Well, well it's, it's always nice when you can tell your wife that you're doing uh, work when you're watching <laughs> college football. We definitely watched the Florida State Pitt game. Sure, because, you're doing work. You know, yeah, so we, we you know, so that was kind of working. We kind of enjoyed it as well in terms of just being able to watch college football. But there's no doubt. I mean, uh, you know, he you know he came from Bowie State. Uh, he put up some really dynamic numbers down there. Uh, you know, and, and and what I've read of him, I, I don't know him personally. Uh, uh, but what I've read, it seems like he's been on track. He's been with some great coaches. Uh, so certainly uh, we're expecting to you know, uh, go into this game, and we're going to have our hands full because we know that uh, schematically they're going to you know, put some things together. Uh, ironically, what, uh, what 
which I, I found out as I was reading their bios, uh, one of his, his co-defensive coordinators uh, is a guy that I interviewed way back when I was at the Citadel. So I do have some familiarity with him. He was at the time, he was a uh, strength conditioning coach at Florida State. Uh, so, uh, so I know that those guys will be well coached. Uh, we were looking at him as a D-line coach and certainly uh, was, was excited. Um, you know, uh, to interview him and, and was very impressed with him. So, and that was a few years ago. So I can only imagine that he's gotten better. Uh, so uh, for us, it, it's an opener. You don't know what to expect uh, from your team. You know, which uh, you're, you're gonna you know get the jitters out early and be able to play consistently, or are you gonna have to you know fight through a lot of adversity and a lot of mistakes? Uh, and the same thing, you don't know what you're gonna get from the opponent. You know, we you know all we know is you know uh, that you know they they've done some one back, they've done some two backs. Watching Florida State, they're pretty multiple. So for us, our game plan is geared around, you know, we got to be ready for what they want to feature, uh, you know, when uh, when we line up uh, Thursday night. And I think that's the, will be the interesting dynamic with two new head coaches going at it. You see what you get, you know, from the kids and, you know, what you get from your teams because I'm sure it's a lot of uh, question marks right now uh, with both sides. And, and on your side of things, you know, what they like to run and on their side of things, what you guys are going to run. Exactly. There's no doubt about it. And uh, we're kind of lined up the same way. This is our only non-league game. This is their only non-league game. They're going into a new conference. So, so I think there's a lot of similarities in terms of what both teams are looking to get out of it. Obviously, we both want to win it, uh, but I think uh, for both of us, if we can walk out having a pretty good idea of what we can and can't do uh, that will help us the remaining 10 games, I think we both would agree that you know that's the road we want to go down. And Fairmont State, dangerous in a number of positions. One, their running back spot, Monroe, returns this year. Had a little bit of a down year last year, but he was also, I believe, had some injury issues. Talk about you know where they can beat you. I mean, where, where they're uh, dangerous. Well, there's no doubt. I mean, I think up front, uh, you know, they got a physical bunch. They got a great running back. Uh, you know, I think it'll be interesting to see what quarterback they settle on. Uh, but I think when you got a strong running game, you can pretty much put anyone back there at quarterback and be able to survive. So we definitely got to put ourselves in a position to you know, uh, be able to hold up on their run game. Uh, I know that they got uh, some talented receivers. Uh, I think they got a couple transfer kids coming in from what you can read from some of the articles and looking at the roster. So, you know, uh, I think defensively it's going to be a, uh, a major challenge for us, not knowing what to expect. And then you got to quickly figure out, okay, who are the go-to guys that we're going to have to have some answers for because I know that they're going to have some, some talented skill guys as well as a very physical offensive line. Keys to win, Coach, here tonight, your uh, season opener, your first game as uh, Griffin's head coach. What do you guys need to do well to come out of here with a victory? I think number one is is that, you know, and I share this with the team, is that, you know, we got to minimize our mistakes. You know, uh, I think, uh, you know, and when you get into your opener, the team that can take care of the football, uh, the team that can, you know, manage drives offensively, uh, the team defensively that doesn't give up big plays, uh, the team that can kind of change the field position on special teams, whether it's blocking a kick and creating a short field or getting a big return uh, or being able to punt out of danger you know or kick out of danger so that you can put yourself in a position where the other team has to go the distance I think those are always key factors in every game but it's really really key uh, in openers because there tend to be more mistakes in openers because it's the first time you're going against someone else it's the first time it's 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 real and, and for us and I'm sure for them they're going to have some new faces and some young guys playing so being able to survive and weather the storm of some of the mistakes you're going to make. Uh, and then we just told our kids, that, you know, it's going to be about four quarters of playing as hard as you possibly can. You're going to make mistakes. There's no doubt about it, you know, but we got to minim minimize those things. And then we got to also make sure that, you know, uh, we're not getting foolish penalties, you know, things that we can control, you know, jumping off sides, you know, face mask, you know, late hits, you know, and with the, you know, we, we really kind of emphasized and stressed it, you know, uh, with the new rule of targeting uh, and watching college football this past weekend, there were a number of players that were ejected, you know, and we, we don't have the kind of depth where we can have guys being injected. So we really talked a lot about making sure guys are wrapping up and putting their hat in the right place and not putting themselves in a position where we might lose them for the game. And in the Peace Act, it's actually a two-game suspension because hmm. they uh, they added a game on to it if you're, wow. if you're uh, called uh, for targeting. So so those are all things that kind of factor in that you got to kind of work through. And uh, we're excited about the process and excited about the challenge. Well, Coach, I want to leave you with, with this question as we uh, are going to hear from Tyler Zimmer coming up in just a moment. Um, if, if someone were to come up to you and say, what can we expect from this Griffins football program under Coach Isaac Collins? 
what can you say to Griffin's Nation? What can you say um, to the fans, the parents, the you know administration, which I'm sure you've said many times already to the administration, but what can you say to, to Griffin's Nation about what we can expect to see from this Griffin's football program under you? Yeah, what we're building towards and what uh, you know I would like to say that they would see is they're going to see a blue-collar bunch, uh, guys that uh, work extremely hard, uh, guys that are gentlemen uh, both on and off the field, uh, that are passionate about their craft, uh, that have pride in – Seton Hill University, pride in our community. Um, I think they're going to get some guys that are going to, and coaches that are going to fight to the bitter end. You know, that's that's what I would like to believe they're going to see, and that's what we're working towards. Uh, and certainly, everything that we've done leading up to the season, and everything that we'll do going forward, will be about building a roster uh, that has young men that are graduating, uh, young men that are tremendous leaders, uh, and young men that every single game and opportunity they get, they know it's a blessing, and they're going to work their tail off. Uh, and, and hopefully. Uh, they're excited to watch us. You know, I know certainly. Uh, you know, we're we're trying to play fast-paced football. We we want to uh, score touchdowns. We want to score points. Uh, defensively, we want to be disruptive. Uh, so hopefully, when they come to support us, uh, whether it's on the road, I know we have a student bus going down uh, for the game, and uh, or if it's a case where uh, you know we're uh, you know uh, at off it, that they would be excited to watch us uh, play uh, a football game. Uh, and, and and I think over time. Uh, the scoreboard will be in our favor. But that's that's the, the kind of the things I would point to that they would be excited about, you know, is that they're going to have some outstanding people uh, that are out on the field playing a game uh, called football. Coach, we're going to have many things to talk about throughout the season. We'll get to uh, uh, Tyler Zimmer's interview here coming up. Uh, I want to thank you. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with yeah. you just for the couple of months that, that we've shared and uh, our talks on a couple of different interviews that, that we've done. Um, and uh, very much looking forward to the season starting. Well, I appreciate it. Looking forward to working with you as well. Coach Isaac Collins of the Seton Hill Griffins in his first season. And, uh, of course, we have kickoff for you coming up in just a little while. But coming up next on Griffins Game Day as we continue on the pregame show, you will hear from Seton Hill junior linebacker outstanding Tyler Zimmer coming up in just a moment. As we continue here on WestmorelandSports.com, getting you ready for Seton Hill's season opener against Fairmont State. <laughs> 